Oh wait, so we've now got an equation uh, for the combustion of butane. Why does this represent the standard enthalpy change of combustion of butane? So go back for your definition. The standard enthalpy change for combustion is complete combustion of one mole. So let's look. One mole of butane, it's a one in front of that C4H10. And it's complete combustion to give me CO2 and H2O. So the reasons why is it's because I am completely combusting one mole of butane and therefore it's a standard enthalpy change of combustion. Uh, use of portable heaters can result in potential dangers. Explain the potential danger of combustion is because com incomplete combustion produces carbon monoxide gas and carbon monoxide gas is toxic. Right, so we've got a portable heater now um, being used. The heater burns 600 grams of propane and consumes 1.5 meters cube of oxygen. Is it safe to use? Okay, let's have a look. So the first thing, if they give you a mass, you work out moles. So first of all, moles of butane is going to equal the mass divided by the molar mass of butane, which is 58. And that gives you 10.34 moles. If you go back to the equation, for every one mole of butane, you need 6.5 moles of oxygen. So moles of O2 required is going to be, whoops, 6.5 times 10.34, which gives me 67.2 moles. Great. How many moles of oxygen are actually um, can, uh, burnt? So moles of O2 that we actually have is going to be 1.50 times 10 to the 3, because I'm going to convert it in to decimeters cubed, remember it's giving me meters cubed here, divided by 24, and that gives me uh, 62.5 moles. Therefore, the heater is not safe to use because it requires 67.2, but it only used 62.5 and therefore some incomplete combustion must be occurring. Radio, so a little bit of a calculation going on now. Um, this obviously is screaming that you use the ideal gas equation. So um, I've got complete combustion of this number of moles of X producing a volume of carbon dioxide gas and they give me a temperature and a pressure. So I'm going to start with PV equals N over T. And if you rearrange that, you know that M is equal to PV over RT. So let's put these numbers in. Uh, they've given um, pressure uh, in kilopascals, so I need to convert that into pascals. So that's 101 times 10 to the 3. Um, and I have also got volume. They've given that to meters cubed, so that's fine and dandy. And then I'm going to divide that by R, which is 8.314 times by T. They're giving it to you in degrees C, you need to convert that into Kelvin, which is 297 Kelvin. And that gives you 0.0818 moles of carbon dioxide gas. Um, so, that's the number of moles of X I start with. Find the number of carbon atoms. Remember, that is the moles of CO2. Um, so, the number of moles of carbon dioxide produced depends on the number of moles of carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon. So, if you take um, that number, divided by the number of moles that you start with, you will get seven. And therefore the number of carbon atoms must be seven, which means the hydrogens must be 16 because it's an alkane 
and you know that the general formula for an alkane is CnH2n plus 2. Okay, so it's time for Hess cycle now. Uh, they have given me uh, combustion data and they want me to calculate this value here. If you've got combustion data down here goes CO2 and H2O and your arrows go down like so. Combustion of C10H22 is minus 6778. Combustion of C4H10 is minus 2877. And you've got two CPH, so it's two times minus 2058. So this equals minus 6993. So you see a little circle. You can see these two arrows are going the same way. So delta H minus 6993 is equal to minus 6778. So delta H is that number plus that number, which is 215 kilojoules per mole. Right, so um, they've now given me uh, the uh, reaction to make sulfur trioxide and it wants me to explain the conditions of temperature and pressure that could be used to obtain the maximum yield and then look at a compromise between yield and reaction rate. So um, this question is an absolute gift. So uh, let's go through this. First of all, let's deal with temperature. It is an exothermic reaction and therefore, if you increase the temperature, the reaction will go in the reverse direction. So to optimize yield for temperature, you would use a low temperature because then that would push the reaction in the exothermic direction. Remember that that direction is exothermic, or the reaction is exothermic. So low temperature, reaction goes in the exothermic direction. How about pressure? Well, I've got three moles of gas on that side and only two moles of gas on that side. So I want to use a high pressure because by using a high pressure, the reaction is again driven from the left to the right. Um, so uh, from the side of the higher mole, uh, number of moles to the lower number of moles. So in summary, to maintain the highest yield, low temperature, high pressure. How about rate? Well, rate, high pressure is great because high pressure means you have the particles in the smaller volume, so more collisions per second. Um, however, high pressure, you obviously have to think about um, the cost of maintaining a high pressure and also it's dangerous as well. Temperature, you don't want to use a low temperature for rate and therefore you must have a compromised temperature. If you have a low temperature for rate, therefore the molecules have less energy less have the required activation energy and therefore there are fewer successful collisions so the rate is much lower.